Now we're going to do the final assembly on the Z axis. And if you remember, we epoxied the motor onto the back of the X carriage here after we assembled the X axis. And we had also, also created this uh, Z axis with the two glued uh, spindles here inside the sleeve. Two bearings, I should say, for the spindle. And uh, of course our Z axis is also working just fine. So before we started the video, I went ahead and I put on one of the couplers and also the shorter Delrin lead screw nut onto the uh, shorter rod, which is the Z axis rod. And um, I've already epoxied the Acme lead screw into the top half. And as I did on the, I believe it was the X axis here, I put the nut down at the slot of this printed coupler and I've already inserted the set screw and ground a flat onto the Z-axis motor shaft to fit this uh, hole with the um, nut in it. So now we're going to do the final assembly. And what we want to do first is the um, actual stage for the Z-axis is going to be screwed with using these three T-nuts that we applied a long time ago. It's going to go through here like this. So we want to line up the holes first and then mate the coupler here and just make sure that the Delrin lead screw is where it's going to need to be to be inside this top piece because then we're going to very carefully apply it so that we don't have any epoxy on any of the threads. That's really the challenging part which is why we're showing this. Otherwise it's just like apply, um, doing any other axis. So I'm just going to put this on here temporarily. Okay, so it's on the motor temporarily, and I just want to put this on here at its lowest point and make sure that the Delrin lead screw is going to be, needs to be a little higher. We want it to be at its proper height so we can just slide the whole assembly together. So that should be about right. Just a little bit more. Okay, so now we can see that when, let me double check this, I'm going to put these screws through here just temporarily to hold it in place to make sure I'm at the right height. Okay, so these are at the right height, and now I can see the Delrin lead screw is actually inside the wood here. So it's, at, it's been screwed up the shaft to the right height to be inside the wood. So I'm going to leave it exactly where it is. I'm going to pull out these screws. And again, there are other ways of doing this, but this way is just to make sure that we can keep the epoxy out of the way of everything. So now that we've got that right, I want to go ahead and tighten up the set screw inside the coupler, lock it onto the motor, and okay, that should do that. And now we're going to be ready to actually assemble the Z-axis and glue this Delrin lead screw in place. So I've mixed up the epoxy here. Got my gloves on, ready to go. And uh, what we want to do is just, because it's a little more challenging because we can't, we're not going to be able to lay this lead screw, you know, down on a piece of wood like we did on the X and Y axis and then just glue it around the edges. We've got to actually insert it into this hole here. Make sure in advance that this hole is in fact big enough for your lead screw nut. And so it's a little more challenging to make sure that we don't get any epoxy on the acne threads. That would be really bad. So way, that's why I said when we're starting off, we're making sure that that's right at the same height as the Z axis when it's all the way down. That way we can just leave it and let gravity take care of it. And we've got it screwed to the correct height. So now we're just going to take a little epoxy and apply it around the rim of the top. We don't want to turn it anymore because that would change its height. We can turn it by turning the lead screw but not the nut. Because we don't want to turn it on the lead screw itself because if the nut turns on that, of course, it'll move and we don't want to do that. So I'm just applying it just below the top, not at the top. So as we put the wood on, it's going to scrape the epoxy down rather than like trying to put it inside the hole here where it would just get sort of shoved up or shoveled up by the rim of the, um, 
lead screw nut, and then you might get a bunch of epoxy on the thread. So it's basically just thinking about the way the epoxy is going to flow so, it does, so you don't get in trouble with it. So we're just going to push this in here and just lower this down and very carefully monitor what happens to the epoxy. If you see it getting to be too much, just get in there with a stick and wipe it off on the rim, around the rim. Okay. I'm just going to push it down the rest of the way. It's like another sixteenth of an inch. Sure. There we go. So it's in there now. And if I look at the side, I don't have any epoxy anywhere near those threads by doing it this way. There's epoxy all the way around the lead screw nut, but it hasn't dripped down onto the threads. And there's not enough of it there to worry about dripping down onto the threads. So there's a little crack up here because the it was slightly oversized. So we can actually now do the opposite, which is to turn that lead screw a little bit up. And I'm just doing that by holding this down and turning the lead screw such that it forces the lead screw nut upwards towards me. So now it's sticking out a little bit, if you can see it right there. And now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm just going to put some epoxy around the rim at the top. And I'm going to hold this still and rotate the lead screw so it sucks the lead screw nut back down into the hole. And there it goes. And it went all the way down. And that looks pretty good. And if you see any excess epoxy again, you know, stick and just kind of wipe it off. Although there's so little epoxy, if you do that, if you follow that method, it'll be epoxied in there securely, but it won't have big globs of it. They're going to be running out all over the lead screw nut. So then before you do anything else, flip it upside down, take a look to make sure there's no excess epoxy that's going to get you in trouble. And it's all clean here. It's all clean up here. And now, get rid of these gloves and all my epoxy material. And I'm going to take the three button head screws, socket head screws here, and the three washers. And I'm just going to assemble them through here. And they're going to go through these three holes in the front of the stage and into the T-nut on the back. There's a little bit of slop so that you can tweak it just a hair. So all I'm doing is just putting in the first one right there, and then, then one's going to be right here, and there's going to be a third one, of course, right there. And all that still looks well, and we're, then we're just going to leave it alone so that this epoxy can harden up. And that will be your Z-axis. we got the motor, we got the coupler, we got a lead screw, and a lead screw nut up inside this top panel epoxied in place. And then the stage with the spindle on it, or what will be the spindle, has been screwed in place with these, these screws. And then I would just leave it, let it harden up, and you can tighten up those screws when, it, when it's all hard. All right, so I'm just going to demonstrate drilling uh, the little pilot holes for all the wood screws that are going to actually hold the body panels together. This is actually the base piece. And I've got a one-eighth inch bit in there, and I'm using, on this drill press, of course, I have the laser. And you don't even have to go all the way through. You just need to go, you know, part of the way through just to start your screw going normal since they're such low, I mean they're such thin screws. So uh, just use a clamp you know, for safety and just one by one go around and do all of your holes on all of your frame pieces. Alright, so now the uh, the axis has uh, set up, hardened up. We're going to do the final assembly which is done with the uh, Phillips head wood screw that I just dropped in here. Um, Fortunately, I have more. So first thing we're going to do is just screw the front, or the, rather the, um, the the back and the back and front to the two sides. And that is only done first right here with the uh, two screws here, and then the screws in the back. And after we've done all those and got those squared up, then we're going to attach it to the base. Oops. You can also just start all of them for convenience sake. Remember we countersunk all these holes. 
So there should be a place for the heads to go. Okie dokie. Put the back on. That's a little bit more of a challenging proposition. You've got to figure out a place to put the rear motor. Since we already attached the rear motor, what I'm just going to do is lay the motor, the rear motor off the back. and attach the bottom plate that way. But first, I'll get all these screws started. And there are 12 of these. All right, so instead of uh, leaning this off the edge of the table so that we can see it, I just put in a little box here so that I can drape the uh, Y-axis motor off the edge of the box and still have it on camera. So, started all my screws for the bottom plate. So I'm just going to square up one corner here, which is nice and square. Everything looks nice and square the way it should be. Again, you can use your fingers as really pretty sensitive tools to, to feel that these are even and flush, just as they should be. Then just hold one corner in place and start those, that screw. Just one of them per corner is all you need to start with, just to hold it in place. And that looks good. I'm going to start this one. Hmm, that actually kind of tried to pull itself offline, so I'm not going to keep that there. Hold this here more tightly. There we go. Okay, and for this one, there's nothing over here, so I can actually lay this on its side and do the next corner, which again feels nice and square. And then to do the last corner, I'm going to drape the Y axis motor, or the X axis motor, I should say, off the side of the box. And do this last corner. And that corner, of course, the other three were square, so this one's square too. Okay. And then just run the other corners and the other side screws in a little ways. That's it. It's all screwed together. And the only thing remaining is, since this is the permanent bed, we're going to put on the, it's called the sacrificial bed, which is the one that can be replaced. And that's just going to screw onto here with the four socket head button cap screws. And uh, I'm not even going to bother to show that because that's pretty straightforward. You got your T-nuts in the holes and you're just going to screw the bed down. So the next thing we're going to do is assemble the spindle and then the mechanical construction will be done and we move on to talking about electronics and software.